And when the chickens lay their eggs, they lay them standing up. <laughs> Be cold one tonight. Somebody better get ready to pry that sun up in the morning and get it started. Yeah, sure we'll be glad to get back to that nice warm mansion in Beverly Hills. It ain't no fun sleeping on this cold, hard floor. Mm, that's a fact. You think that's bad? You ought to try sharing a room with that wild daughter of yourn. Well, at least ways you got a bed. That ain't a bed. That's a nest, a roost, and a den and a hutch all in one. <laughs> Is them animal friends of Ellie's still coming in at night, Granny? Everything that can get through the window. Why don't you shut the window? Because I can't sleep without fresh air. Especially with that third party in bed with us. What third party? Ellie, can you come out here and bring your friend with you? Yeah, Granny. <laughs> now, don't you worry about it, Granny. I'll chuck it out. Whatever it is, got to get your sleep. Did you uh -oh. us, Granny? Your pa wants that pole cat. Give it to him. Now, wait a minute. Don't point that thing at me. You don't want to get drove outdoors on a night like this. Well, don't you want him, Pop? I just want to say that Granny'd appreciate it if he'd have this little fella sleep with his own family. All right, I'll go get the other thing. Oh, no, no, no. Outdoors with his family. Otherwise, when we go to California, they might not take him back in. And if a skunk ain't welcome with his own family, he just about ain't got nobody to turn to. All right, I'll put him out to window. Uncle Jed, why can't we go back to Beverly Hills right away? Reckon we can tell him the truth, Granny? I reckon he's big enough. Well, you see, we promised your ma we'd stay here and help her till she gets herself married to Mr. Brewster. Well, how long will that take? Well, it ain't to take long. She's got him boarding in your room now where she can get at him. Pearl told me tonight, tonight. She's gonna feed him into a stupor, then set him in the parlor and sing to him until he proposes. It's a powerful combination, Pearl cooking and singing. Yeah. If he can get got, Pearl will get him. <laughs> uh, uh, ain't that a precious picture? <sighs> Niagara Falls. Where the honeymooners go. <laughs> Understand they're having special winter rates there now. I think I'd better turn in. I've got to get up awfully early. No, 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 no. You, you sit down and relax. Jethreen and me's got a special surprise for you. It isn't food, is it? Food for the soul and the spirit. Music. What would you like to hear? Oh, anything you'd like to sing. Well, I'll just pick out something at random. <laughs> Let's try this, Jeffrey. Oh, promise me that someday you and I Take our love together to some sky where we can be alone and faith renewed. <laughs> so stirred up tonight. Oh, but something sure is setting them off. Hey, I can't sleep a wink. Go to the right, Granny. Go to the left, Granny. The moon's keeping you awake, too, Granny? Hey, sure is. Now, when goes right through you. Ain't their hollering that's getting me. They're snoring. Snoring? <laughs> Look for yourself. Ellie's got two of them under the bed. Granny, we gotta get that girl back to Beverly Hills. She's going right back to being a wild cougar. What y'all all doing out here? Try to keep warm. Sure it's cold in there without you, Granny. Mind if I join you? I reckon so, if you don't mind a little human company for a change. Uncle <laughs> Jed, we just gotta get ourselves back to Beverly Hills. We will, Jethro, as soon as your ma gets proper hitched to Mr. Brewster. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, Pearl, give it all you got tonight. Oh, we's all gonna be down with pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> Just a song at twilight when the nights are low and the flickering shadows softly come and go. <laughs> Oh, joy. 
coming from you. Naturally, folks around here brag on us. In fact, they think we ought to go on a concert tour. Oh, really? Oh, yes. My neighbors, he's always after me to sing out of town. <laughs> well, I can understand that. <laughs> uh, M Mr. Brewster, do you really like music and singing? Well, I used to. I mean, I used to sing a lot myself in college musicals, amateur theatricals. Was you on the stage, Mr. Brewster? Oh, yes, yes. After college, I did quite a bit of little theater work, summer stock. Matter of fact, there was a time when I seriously considered the stage as my career. Ma, Mr. Brewster's an actor. Well, not any longer. My father had other ideas. He insisted I get into the oil business. Uh, Mr. Brewster, did you ever do anything from the Bard or Babon? That Shakespeare, oh, I just love him. Well, as a matter of fact, I once played the lead in Romeo and Juliet. Which one was you? I was Romeo. Uh, in my youth, I was considered quite a, quite a leading man type. And there were those who thought I had rather a handsome profile. Well, you still got it. And I'll bet you can act to beat the band. Oh, come on. Take off a part for us. Something from Shakespeare. Sit down, Kathy. Well, I doubt if I can remember anything. Oh, please, Mr. Brewster. Well, uh, perhaps I can recall something from the balcony scene. Let's see now. Uh, how does it go? Uh, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, are far more fair than she. Not a bad, Catherine. Uh, well, I think I'll turn in. Oh, well, uh, uh, please, do some more of them love speeches from Shakespeare. Well, my throat is a little sore. I think I'd better gargle a little warm salt water and go to bed. Well, I can take care of you. That's another one of my specialties, nursing the sick. Well, it might be the flu bug, and you wouldn't want to catch it. Uh, good night. If his flu bug is as hard to catch as he is, I got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Jed, have you ever noted to be so cold? Never have, Jethro. Ah, this ain't cold. Your blood is thinned out from living in California. You say this ain't cold, Granny? Look who else is huddled up to the fire. Ellie and her wolves. <laughs> Morning, Granny. Cold? You call this cold? Why, well, I remember a winter morning that was so cold that when I went to milk the cow, the milk froze for it hit the pail. <laughs> and break it off in sticks. Yes, sir. I carried a double armful of milk in and never spilled a stick. Gee, Granny, how'd you drink it? Bite on it? Nope. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> You're in a right good mood this morning. Jeff, I got a feeling in my bones that Pearl got him last night. Oh, I seen Mr. Brewster's car coming down the road, and ain't Pearl's with him. I told him, my bones is never wrong. <laughs> You want me to carry Mr. Brewster over the threshold for you, Ma? <laughs> she don't look too happy. <laughs> she don't sound too happy, neither. Oh, all oh, women folk cry when they're about to get married. I didn't get him. Oh. Did you try your best, Pearl? Oh, Granny, I throwed the book at him. Cooking, sewing, singing. I even nursed him through the flu. Got him well in five minutes. <laughs> but he didn't propose. Jed, you go.
go out there and do your duty to your female cousin. Ask that city fella what he'd rather get, married or buried. Now, <laughs> Granny, I don't hold with getting folks married unless it's willing. Pearl's got enough willing for both of them. <laughs> Are you going to make a liar out of my bones? Yeah, and I'll have a talk with Mr. Brewster. Where'd he go, Pearl? He said he was going to park the car on the warm side of the cabin. But he must have run off. After him, everybody, we'll head him off at the pass and shoot him down like a dog. Now, you hold on. You ain't shooting nobody down. Just simmer down. Why, he didn't run off at all. Except we'll need you, Ellie, to get him back in here. How come? Uh, looks like a couple of your friends are sizing him up for breakfast. <laughs> In all sincerity, Mr. Pampett, your, your cousin Pearl is a very remarkable woman. It's just that, well, I, I don't want to get married. Well, I understand that, Mr. Brewster, and I thank you for speaking the truth like a man. But my cousin Pearl has got herself a problem. Oh, what's that? Well, uh, ain't no secrets in the hills, and everybody's dog knows that you've been boarding with her over at her place, and they all know she's had her cap set for you. And, oh, I ain't blaming you, Mr. Brewster. Jed? Did he say yes? Can we come out now? Well, not yet a while, Granny. Well, if you're too chicken to shoot him, Ellie's got her wolves standing by. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, in order to save my cousin Pearl from shame, I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Anything I can do. I want you to propose to her in front of somebody. But... And let her turn you down, of course. Oh, oh I see. Of course, yes, that'll save face. Uh, uh, well, uh, Pearl will know that she's supposed to turn me down. Oh, sure, we'll have an understanding with Pearl. Now, the one I think you ought to propose in front of is Elverna Bradshaw. You know, Mr. Clampett, this idea of yours is quite inspired. Oh, it's just a notion. You see, Elverna is the biggest gossip in the hill. No, really, it's brilliant. <laughs> it combines drama, pathos, suspense. It has a happy ending. Great third act curtain. It's 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 real theater. Of course, you'll have to be convincing so Elverna will convincing. Be. Why, I'll give a performance that the people of these hills will remember as long as they live. <laughs> well, just so that uh, when Pearl Bodine turns down my impassioned proposal of marriage, there won't be a dry eye in the house. <laughs> Elverna, don't cry easy. Oh, well, now surely you're not going to waste this dramatic scene before just one person. Well, I reckon Elverna's daughter. I've got it. I've got it at the movie house where Pearl plays the piano. You want to propose there? Well, it's perfect. Everybody in town will see it. Well, want to kind of shame you to be turned down in front of all them people? Well, it's, it's just a performance. <clears throat> I've learned one thing in the theater. An actor always gives a better performance in front of a full house. Well, doggy. That sure is nice, are you? <laughs> it's, my, it's my pleasure, Mr. Clampton. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Bodine. Granny, uh, come on in. Come on in, everybody. How about it? How about it? How about it, everybody? I reckon we better let Mr. Brewster tell you what's going to happen. Oh. Well, tonight at the movie house, Mrs. Bodine, while the whole town looks on, I'm going to ask you to marry me. until you hear the rest of the story. Now, Pearl, when Mr. Brewster asks you to marry him, you're going to say no. Not unless I'm as drunk as you are. <laughs> Howdy, Pearl. Evening, Pearl. Hey, Hi, Granny. Just rolling on ahead down to the theater to get a fire going in the stove. Where's Jeff Rene, Pearl? Why, she's in her room getting dressed. Go on in and see her. Granny, what happened to your mink coat? This is it. Tonight's kind of special, so I'm wearing the pretty side out. <laughs> you sure got your pretty side out tonight, Pearl? <laughs> oh, I tell you, Jed, I'm as nervous as if I was going to get a real honest-to-goodness proposal. And it would be real. If your cousin Jed would do his duty and hold a shotgun on that fellow, Brewster. Now, ladies, let's settle for what we got. This way, Pearl can come to California without nobody saying she left town in disgrace. Good evening. Good evening. Ain't you dressed up? 
That boiled shirt makes your face look kind of dark. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing a little theatrical makeup. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, uh, how would you like some pancake on your face? How'd you like some sweet potato pie on yours? <laughs> Fetch me some hot possum grease, Pearl, and I'll fling it on them. Now, ladies, you misunderstood me. Pancake is a type of makeup we use in the theater. An actor, like myself, would feel positively undressed without it. I thought you was oil man. Well, that's my business. But at heart, I shall always be an actor. <laughs> say now, speaking of acting, you two got it figured out what you're going to say? Oh, yeah, we rehearsed 12 times. Um, Mr. Brewster will be sitting on the front row. And when the picture's over, he'll jump up uh, and he... Excuse me. I've been thinking about that. I believe it would be more effective if I made an entrance. <laughs> entrance? Yes, I'll come down the aisle. Oh, oh, all right. And then Mr. Brewster's going to say, Mrs. Bodine, don't go to California with your cousin Jed. Stay here and be my wife. Uh, excuse me. I, I've been thinking about that, too. Uh, after a big entrance down the aisle, that's going to seem like a pretty flat opening speech. Well, you just say what you want to say. All I got to say is, no, I won't marry you. If that's Homer Winch, I'm going to hit him right in the head. Good evening, Pearl. Oh. What, what are you doing here? Well, you and me being such close friends, I just thought I'd offer to play Piani for you at the theater tonight. Why? Surely you're not going to show up and have folks whispering behind your back all during the picture. <laughs> what in the world would they be whispering about? Pearl, I'm your best friend. You don't have to pretend with me. <laughs> the whole town knows how you've been flinging yourself at that border of yours. For your information, Alberta Bradshaw, Mr. Booster proposed to me 12 times today, and 12 times I turned him down. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why he give you this here mink comb? Cause you turned him down. <laughs> this here mink coat was given to me by my niece, Ellen May Clampett. Oh, Pearl, I keep telling you, you don't have to pretend with me. I'm your best friend. <laughs> when Alverna Bradshaw is your best friend, you're up to your eyeballs and enemies. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, if you was to go in there now and propose in front of Alverna, you could save yourself a trip to the theater, and the news would get around a heap quicker. <laughs> you don't understand, Mr. Clampett. An actor needs an audience. <laughs> now, Verna, if you don't mind, I'd like you to get out of my coat and out of my house. I'm going to be late for the theater. Pearl, take your best friend's advice and sneak out of town quietly. <laughs> you can depend on me to smooth everything over. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> performance is right. I reckon she'll sneak out of town in a hurry if she ain't already snuck. <laughs> Mind you, Pearl's my best friend, and I ain't one to talk, but... Uh... <laughs> Good evening, lady. You too, Alverna. <laughs> oh, I noticed Mr. Brewster wasn't with her. Oh, and did you see that mink coat? Well, I wouldn't trade this little band of gold and a home-loving husband for a dozen mink coats. Would I, Luke? Luke? <laughs> Luke Bradshaw! <laughs> that new sneak, he got away again. <laughs> <laughs>
Mrs. Bodine. I just saw that poster out front. Farewell performance. Does that mean you are leaving? Oh, yes, Mr. Brewster. I'm going to California with my cousin Jed and his family. Oh, no, 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 please. Please, I beg you. I implore you. I beseech you. Don't go. Stay here and be my wife. <laughs> No, thank you, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> I cannot. I will not accept that answer. Oh, I love you, Pearl Bodine. I love you with all my heart. With all my soul, I love you as no man has ever loved woman before. He's better than Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> be mine. Pearl, be mine. Come back here, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> no, Mr. Brewster, my answer is no. Then life has come to an end. Now, what is life without love? If I was him, I'd let it go at that. <laughs> without Pearl Bodine, there is no love. Oh, me darling, oh, me precious. Say those words that will make me the happiest of men. I'm behind you. <laughs> my answer is still no. Better quit while you're ahead, Mr. Brewster. Oh, how those words stab into my heart like cold steel. And only you, Pearl Bodine, can heal the mortal wound. Oh, <laughs> moon of my desire, marry me, Pearl. No. I promise you a life of happiness. No. A life of luxury. No. Oh, me darling, look into me tear-stained eyes. Look into the tortured face of your love slave. Free me with that one divine word. Say yes. Say yes, and together we will enter a paradise of love everlasting. Yes, 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 I marry you. <laughs> Uh, did you say yes? Yes! <laughs> if I hadn't said yes, I was ready myself. <laughs> That's fine right there, Mr. Brewster. Get through! You can start bringing them things out now. Oh, boy, I can't wait to get back to California. I ain't been warm clean through since we got here. We've been sleeping on a hard floor. It'd be awful nice to get in the warm bed for a change. I'll take it, Jethro. Take it, take it easy. Granny ready? Yeah, she's just putting on her gators. I'll bring it right out. Well, I hope you'll come visit us in California. We'd be mighty glad to see you, especially Pearl. Her and Jethro's coming to stay with us. <laughs> Big overgrown moose. You can put it on in the car, Granny. We's in a hurry. We can't leave until somebody finds Ellie Mae. Where is she? She took to the woods early this morning with those two timber wolves that she's let sleep under her bed. Oh, I'll find her. My dog is a good thing we're leaving. One more night and she'd be baying at the moon. And you two rascals has got to stay away from Maggie and her family. You hear me? Is it a deal? All right. Now, don't you forget it. Christina, Maggie, give their word. What's more, Frida's gonna keep an eagle eye on them. And if they goes to pestin' you, she's gonna snatch them ball. Ain't you, Frida? <laughs> I wish you could come to Beverly Hills and live with us, but I reckon it'd be too long a trip for you and your youngin'. But I'll come back and see you in the spring. Ellie Mae. Over here, Pa. You got them wolves with you? Well, they won't pester you none. And that no biting promise goes for my pa, too. Hello there, Maggie. Hey, honey. Mr. Brewster's waiting, and we got to pick up Pearl and Jethreen and drive clean to the airport. St. Pearl and Mr. Brewster are getting married? Well, no, not yet. Uh, maybe never. But Pearl's satisfied. 
Everybody in town seen him propose to her. Now she can leave town with her chin up and her head thrown back, proud and happy. Well, I'll bet you cousin Jeff Rain ain't happy. She says she ain't going to California and leave her sweetie Jazz Boat a pew. She's powerful in love with that little feller. Yeah, I reckon Jess Reen will do pretty much what her ma tells her to. That Pearl's a mighty strong-willed woman. Jeff Reen's pregnant time for them to pick us up. Now, no more sulking. You're coming to California. I don't want to hear no more argument about it. Okay, ma. I'm coming. <laughs> world have you got there? It's a trunk, Ma. Well, I can see that, but what you got in it? Well, I got some clothes and some shoes and, and some food and some water. I forgot the water. Water? Why did you... <laughs> Dean, that daughter of yours is a mighty strong-willed girl. Did she put you in, player? I think so. I told her I couldn't go to California with her. And that's the last thing I remember. Oh, don't let him get away. Jeff Green, you put him down. This minute. What's the matter with you? Why, that poor boy could suffocate in that trunk without no air. <laughs> Jethreen, am I going to have to take a switch to you? Jethreen, honey, like I told you, I can't just pick up and go. I got a big business going here. Well, couldn't you be a traveling salesman in California? <laughs> Darling, it's taken me years to build up this territory. And this is my big selling season. Well, I can knock down $100 in the next two or three months. And a fellow don't walk away from a gold mine like that. <laughs> in sense, Jeffrey. But Uncle Jed's a millionaire. And Cousin Ellis says they got plenty of room in that mansion. Or he could stay there with us. <laughs> Jeff, the rain. I got my pride. Well, I'd rather die than take charity from my sweetheart's kin folks. Now, what's your you can write to one another? Of course. And I'll be here when you get back. Oh, there they are. Now, Jeff Green, you get ready to leave. Oh, Mr. Brewster, I thought it was my boy Jethro, cousin Jed, come to pick up the suitcases. Well, no, I I asked him to let me come for them. I well, you see. This, uh, this may be my last chance to see you alone for a moment. Alone? You? you me? Us? Well, why would you... Well, first, I want to thank you for publicly breaking our engagement after I lost my head, as I did last night. Oh, shucks. I, I didn't mean it when I said yes. It was just nerves and excitement at the moment. Well, you were very sweet about yeah, it. Yeah, well, well, but now that my head is clear and I'm thinking straight, well, I realize I couldn't get married right now. Well, some man would lose a wonderful wife. My goodness, I got, I got family obligations, you know. My cousin Jed's been after me three or four months to come to Beverly Hills and get that wild daughter of his proper dressed and acting like a lady. I'm going to miss you, Mrs. Bodine. Yes, well, he's in just me to me. I don't know what come over me last night. Now that I had a good night's sleep in the morning coffee, got my wits together, well, I could just laugh at myself for, for even considering marriage. Uh, Mrs. Bodine, I, I just want to say that I think you're a splendid woman, and I'm sure our paths will cross again. And, well, I'd consider it a, a great honor if you'd allow me to kiss you goodbye. Kiss me. Well, I hardly think there'd be anything wrong with that. <laughs> you know, Mr. Don, you had any pearls? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ellie Mae, look, uh, Jeff Reed's in there saying goodbye to her sweetie, Jasbo DePew. So why don't you go in and say goodbye to him, too? Huh? All right. I ain't never met him. <laughs> Jeff Rain, you're just going to have to get it through your head. I cannot go to California, and that's that. Hattie. Oh, hi, Cousin Ellie. This here's my sweetie, Jasbo to Pew. Howdy, Jasbo. Oh, no, great big howdy to you. <laughs> this girl is the cousin you've been telling me about? Yeah, Jasbo. She's the one we'll be staying with in California. 
Well, poke me another air hole, baby, and let's go. <laughs> from Brewster in Tulsa. The Clampets are on their way home. Jeffro? Oh, I mean the Clampets. <laughs> yes, and they're bringing a cousin and her daughter along. That'll be six of them. I think I'd better order an extra limousine. Chief, if I may suggest, the personal touch is very important to these people, and they are the bank's largest depositors. I would be happy to volunteer my car and myself. I can take at least half the load. Jethro. <laughs> <laughs> and the luggage. <laughs> See, Chief, I have bucket seats, and Jethro is quite a bucketful. <laughs> How's about three apiece, Chief? Fine. We'll be ready to leave the airport about noon. Entendu, mon capitaine. Time to leave for the airport, Miss Hathaway. Right. This is just for the Clampets. I have no intention of disrupting office discipline with my seductive appearance. What a remarkable change. Three hours in the beauty salon. Tell me, are you busy tonight? <laughs> because if you're not, I'd like you to work and make up those three hours. <laughs> They could have missed the plane. Oh, impossible. Brewster phoned me after he put him on board. Uh, oh, miss, uh, are there any more passengers aboard? Yes, there are uh, six, well, they appear to be um, hillbillies. Was well, there anything wrong with them? Oh, no. You see, we served lunch before we arrived, and they refused to leave the plane until they helped do the dishes. Oh. <laughs> we served 120 lunches. <laughs> well, here they come. Flight 201 for Chicago and New York is now loading at the East Concourse. Oh, thank you for sharing your food with us. And thank you for doing the dishes. You sure you don't want us to wash the windows? It won't take long if we all pitch in. <laughs> thank you. It's right, Dave. Howdy. Welcome home, Mr. Clampy. This here is my cousin, Pearl Bodie. Oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Oh, excuse my wet hand. Oh, it's quite all right. Well, how did you enjoy your plane ride? I don't believe it. Ah, plain don't believe it. It's a miracle. <laughs> oh, well, it ain't nothing. You ain't seen nothing, Pearl. Wait till we ride on that escalator. Yes. Well, my car's out in front, Mr. Clavitt. Come on. <laughs> Mon amour. <laughs> that ain't my name. <laughs> Who are you? I am a wild the mysterious gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> Take you away to my gypsy camp. You got some food there? <laughs> well, I can't stay long, but I am kind of hungry. <laughs> Help and wash all them dishes. Give me quite an appetite. <laughs> yes, them stairs is moving. We're having a California earthquake. Uh, Earl, them stairs are supposed to move like that. What's that? I don't know, but uh, that's what they call an escalator. The only thing is, last time I was here, they was moving the other way. <laughs> come on. Well, we ain't going to get on them crazy stairs. Oh, come on, Pearl. Once you're on there, you like it. <laughs> Welcome home, Allie Mae. Howdy, Mr. Dodd's Welcome home, Granny. Thank you. Well, where's your three? Last I saw of her, she was still eating. <laughs> Well, now, that wasn't bad, was it? No, it was fun. Let's go up and ride down again. Oh, uh, no, Pearl. Uh, it's fun, all right, but it just ain't worth fighting your way back upstream. Jason, <laughs> <laughs> this 
place needs politics. A ghost just went through that door. There ain't no ghost. Well, that's what they call an uh, electric eye. They got them all over out here. Well, you go first. I ain't taking no chances on crowding a spook. <laughs> It's so warm. And the air smells different from the mountains. Yep, looks different, too. Out here, you can see what you're breathing. <laughs> yeah, got a lot of body to it. I tell you, Pearl, there's some days when you can cut it with a knife. But don't try it, because it gets a knife awful smudgy. <laughs> we can wait here in Mr. Drydale's car till the rest of them come. I can't believe it. I've seen pictures, but I just can't believe it. It ain't real. It's real, Ma. <laughs> Jed Queen, don't you knock no holes in your Uncle Jed's mansion. Ah, uh, she can't hurt it, Pearl. Wait till you see inside, Pearl. It's the biggest bunch of indoors you ever did see. <laughs> the ones at the airport? Oh, uh, you've got to climb those yourself. <laughs> Come on, Jeffrey. I'll show you upstairs. Granny, how do you ever wash that thing? Ain't washing yet, Pearl. Oh, well, don't you worry. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, Pearl, uh... Uh, now, this here is what they call the drawing room. Drawing. Wait till you see this piano. The whole thing is hand painted. Yeah, Pearl. Ain't that just about the prettiest piano you ever did see? It's got pictures on it. Hmm. Look at the dust. <laughs> did you run up them curtains? No. They was here when we came. Well, as soon as we get settled. I'll run up some new ones. <laughs> when does ain't been washed in weeks? Well, uh, Pearl, you know, it's a mighty big house. It'd take a miracle woman to get it all done. <laughs> Looks like I've come just in time, huh? <laughs> Where's the kitchen, Jack? I'll show you. <laughs> Thirty-two rooms in this house, and something tells me it ain't gonna be big enough. <laughs> Where's St. Pearl? Well, her and Granny's in that little room they call a butler's pantry. Well, it is a nice enough kitchen, Granny, but it sure ain't as big as you led me to believe. Pearl, they don't the world's a stove. The stove is... Oh. This here's the barest cupboard I ever did see, but I reckon if you ain't got a stove, you don't need food. Uh, this room. Hey, Pearl, what do you think? Well, I think I should have brought my coal oil stove. <laughs> For your information, Miss Pearl, we got gas. Well, I don't wonder. Eating nothing but uncooked food. <laughs> Your pump is... It ain't been used so long, Pearl. You know, Granny, we got a lot of work to do to get this kitchen in shape. Granny, did you tell Pearl this is a kitchen? I ain't been able to tell Pearl nothing. She won't quit flapping her trap long enough. <laughs> Pearl, come on. This here is a kitchen. That there is what they call a pantry. My stars and God. <laughs> what? Well, a person could feed an army in here. Well, the way those two young'uns of yours eat, that's just what you'll have to do. Uh, Pearl, uh, look at this stove here. Now, all you have to do to get fire is uh, turn one of them little things right here without lighting no matches nor nothing. Now, look at here. This here lights this in here. And this one uh, lights this one. And this one lights this one here. And this one lights this one. Now, what do you think of that, Pearl? I declare, I'm just speechless. 
That'll be the day. <laughs> oh, look at this ice box here. Just take a look. You ever see anything like that before? Look at that. Well, I don't like to mention it yet, but somebody left the light a burning in there. <laughs> I reckon some people just don't care how they waste other people's money. The light comes on when you open the door. You don't say. He pert near didn't with you pounding your gums. <laughs> Well, Jeffrey wants to know where's the suitcases, especially the big one with the sandwiches in it. <laughs> but Jethro said he'd bring in the suitcases. Jethro. Well, what happened to my boy? Well, where's Jethro? Well, the last time I seen him, a dark-haired gypsy woman was a taking him away. <laughs> Gypsy's got him. My baby's been carried off by the gypsy. Don't <laughs> oh, worry, Pearl. One meal and they'll carry him right back. <laughs> you might have a little bit mixed up. Besides, Jethro is big enough to take care of himself. Yeah, my mom's in here. Come on in. It's my baby. Where you been? What, the gypsy woman? We stopped to get something to eat. I told you one meal and they'd bring them back. <laughs> you gypsy kidnapper. I'm gonna snatch you both. Get out of the way. What you doing being a gypsy? Just a little harmless fun, Mr. Clampett. When Jeffro failed to recognize me, I couldn't resist continuing the masquerade. Uh, Ma, this here's Miss Hathaway, Mr. Drysdale's secretary. I'm happy to know you, Mrs. Bottine. I have brought your son back safe and sound. Well, thank you. Yeah. Is your hair back? <laughs> How about staying for supper, Miss Hathaway? Oh, I wouldn't want to be any trouble. Well, I figured with company at the table, there wouldn't be so much trouble. Wait, you taste good as sweet potato pie. Ain't nobody can make sweet potato pie like my ma. Now, they is both very fine, extra good cooks, but uh, Pearl not knowing her way around the kitchen, I reckon. Oh, well, don't you worry none about that, Jeff. I'll have this kitchen put in order in no time. <laughs> it ain't out of order. Ellie, <laughs> you get rid of the ants. I'll start the cooking. What ants? Start with your Aunt Pearl. <laughs> well, I like that. I bet you you won't like what I'm going to say next. Uh, girls, I got an idea. Now, Pearl, you know they ain't nothing more soothing and appetizing than a mess of piano playing and sweet singing for supper. But I figure a body can't be doing that and cooking at the same time. No, I don't think they hardly could, Jed. Right. Now, if somebody will get Mr. Drysdale, we'll all sit around while supper's cooking and listen to the kind of music that has made the name of Bodine famous from Oxford to Eureka Spring. <laughs> Pretty near supper time. Want me to start setting the table? Yeah, and let's use that big company table in the fancy eating room. Okay, Paul. Uh, you help me get the chairs around it? Why, sure. Leave the door open so we can hear the music. Okay, Paul. I'm kind of glad we got the company so we can show off this fine eating table. <laughs> yeah, we ain't used it since Thanksgiving. Has Granny figured out a way to get this tablecloth unstuck yet? No, she ain't, Paul. She even tried to sting it off. <laughs> Couldn't get loose. She said if she didn't know better, she'd think somebody stuck it down on purpose. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got all my pot passers notched. <laughs> Come in real handy. See? You find out there if you want, you can uh, reach for it and get it or pass it without bothering the fellow sitting next to you. Yeah, the good thing about this table is things can't go as loud now. Oh, I gotta tell Granny. Since we're gonna use this table, she can leave the vittles right in the pots. No, he's a pearl getting fancy. <laughs> Ever see anybody bake a fluffier pie than that one? <laughs> Some folks don't know that cakes is fluffy and pies is juicy. <laughs> it fell. You did that on purpose, probably. <laughs> My pie can't fall. It can't, huh? <laughs> Just then. <laughs> Quiet. Pearl, I ain't never heard you, you play the pie any, any prettier than you're a plane that <laughs> You ain't playing the pie. 
Annie. You bet you I ain't. take everybody out to a nice eating place. Mr. Clabbit, with your money, you can buy the finest restaurant in Beverly Hills. Before the battle's over, that's just what I might have to do. Come on, everybody. <laughs> 